All right, Levi, here's the deal. I know it's been like a good 10 years. I know we love each other very much, but um, some schmuck on the internet says that I can't be a minimalist if I have you. So I'm gonna need you to leave, okay? So I've been actively practicing minimalism for well over six years now. And I found that overall it has had a very positive impact on my life in many ways. It's allowed me to have a more simple but fulfilling life. It's allowed me to have more mental clarity. It's allowed me to learn to prioritize the things that I actually care about and to eliminate the things that I don't. But like anything else, if you approach it the wrong way, it can actually do the opposite. Minimalism could become a source of stress, a source of anguish, and a source of frustration, which is absolutely not the goal. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over eight different ways that you might be doing minimalism wrong. The very first sign that you might be approaching minimalism incorrectly is that it's all you think about. I think it's very much in our human nature to obsess about things. I think that it's normal to find a new hobby or new interest and to dive headfirst into it. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with doing deep dives or going down the rabbit hole, but if you've been at this for a little while and all you can really think about is minimalism, you might not be approaching it correctly. I've seen many people decide to embrace minimalism and then begin decluttering and removing things from their life, even beyond their physical possessions. And then before you know it, they've replaced all of those things with minimalism itself. They no longer have hobbies, minimalism is their hobby. They no longer have interests, minimalism Minimalism is their interest. They no longer have a personality. Minimalism is their personality. And that's not really how it's supposed to be. And so if you find yourself spending hours and hours every single week reading about minimalism, watching videos about minimalism, thinking about it, obsessing about it, and worrying about it, you're probably not approaching it in the way that it's meant to be approached. The second sign that you might be approaching minimalism incorrectly is if you feel guilty for the things that you own. Life is so subjective and everybody has their own hobbies, their own interests, and their own lifestyle. And if you find yourself holding onto things that make you happy and add value to your life, but then feeling guilt for those, you're not approaching this correctly at all. Some people are big readers and love to collect books. Some people like myself love music and like collecting records. Maybe you play a bunch of different sports and you have a bunch of different equipment that goes with the sports. Maybe you're into photography or videography and you have a lot of cameras and gear. Whatever it is that you're into, whatever it is that adds fulfillment to your life and makes you happy, you're gonna need different things that go with that and that's okay. Maybe you have kids and you need all the stuff that goes along with having kids or maybe you have pets and you need all the pet supplies. But if you find yourself feeling guilty for having those things in your possession, well, you shouldn't feel guilty at all. And that leads directly into mistake number three, which is depriving yourself. If there are things that you want, if they make sense for you, if they make you happy, if you can afford them, there's absolutely no reason for you not to have them. If you feel the need to limit the things you bring into your home specifically because you're trying to abide by some sort of arbitrary minimalism rule book, you're definitely doing it wrong. Minimalism is about simplification, but it is absolutely not about deprivation. Getting rid of things that you use on a regular basis makes absolutely no sense and is not the point. The point is to eliminate the things that don't serve you, but the things that do, you should have them. There is no rule book that you need to adhere to. This isn't a religion or a cult. There is no one who's going to be able to dictate if you're doing it right or wrong. And if you're actively depriving yourself of the things that make your life better, why would you wanna do that? The fourth sign that you might be doing minimalism wrong is if you're replacing perfectly good items with new minimalist friendly versions, whatever the heck that means. I like to look at minimalism as a means of living more lightly. And I mean that in a couple ways, meaning like lightening and lessening the burden of stress that I carry on a regular basis, uh, lessening the amount of time that I have to spend making arbitrary silly decisions, lessening the amount of hours I have to spend working, lessening the amount of money that I waste and the amount of resources that I waste. But if you find yourself throwing out perfectly good items with the full intentions of replacing them with other things that somehow fit some other arbitrary definition of minimalism, that's the complete opposite. That's completely senseless. If you have a closet full of clothing that you like and that fits you well and that you wear, throwing it all out just to replace it with a capsule wardrobe is very wasteful. Likewise, throwing out all of your kitchen Tupperware just to replace it with a pretty matched set is also pretty wasteful. I think it makes perfect sense that as things wear out, you replace them with better, higher quality versions, maybe more aesthetically pleasing versions, and that's all good. For example, I very recently decided to invest in these two high quality professional kitchen knives to replace an entire block of knives that I'd been using up till now that were not very sharp and not very useful. So these two knives are gonna take the place of six or seven or maybe even eight other knives I've been using up till now, but I did so because I needed to, not just because I wanted to. But to go and throw out items that are perfectly functional just so you can replace them immediately with something else that does exactly the same thing is so incredibly wasteful. It's wasteful of your time, it's wasteful of your money, it's a waste of resources, it's bad for the environment. It just doesn't really make any sense. The fifth very common minimalist mistake that I think a lot of people make is trying to be somebody that they're not. 
Minimalism as a lifestyle is completely unrelated to minimalism as a design principle. Surely there are some people who like both of those things, and in fact, I am one of those people, but those two things are completely unrelated. There is no relation between the way that somebody lives with an intentional, simple life and like the very modern art decor, interior design, whatever philosophy. Those are two completely separate things. But if you spend time researching minimalism online, you might be inclined to think that those things have to go hand in hand, and they don't. Surely there are a lot of people, like I said, myself included, who really like the minimalism design aesthetic, who like the neutral palettes, who like the clean modern design. Obviously my whole life is white and gray. Um, and to be honest with you, white and gray have been my colors basically forever. Like long before I had ever heard of minimalism, gray was always my comfort color. But if that's not the case for you, don't feel a need to box yourself into something that is inauthentic to who you actually are. If you're somebody who has a more eccentric style and you like a lot of color and a lot of texture, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like wacky patterns, there's nothing wrong with that. You can still be a minimalist living in an apartment that is painted pink and purple and green. Minimalism is about simple living. It's not about everything in your life being monochromatic, even if that's the way that some people, myself included, maybe choose to live. It is not about being inauthentic to yourself. It is not about depriving yourself of who you actually are and what you actually want in life. And if it was, why would you volunteer yourself into something that forces you to be somebody you're not? The sixth mistake that I see a lot of people making when they first decide they want to embrace the more minimalist friendly lifestyle is seeking approval or validation from strangers. There is no reason you should feel like you need validation from others, especially from strangers on the internet, about how you should or shouldn't live your life, about the things you should or shouldn't own, the things you should or shouldn't declutter, the things that are okay or not okay to bring into your home. It's your home and it's your life, and why do you care what somebody else thinks, especially somebody that you'll never even meet face to face? I'd bet that a lot of this feeling comes from the place that we're at in society, especially on the internet where people are so hostile and so volatile and so rude all the time. Most people in real life don't even have the nerve to tell somebody to go to the back of the line if they cut in front of them in the grocery store, but they have no problem going online, hiding behind their screens and saying all sorts of rude things to people that they would never ever say to them in real life. Everybody thinks their opinion is worth something and I have news for you, it's not. So I guess I can see how all of that might lead to somebody feeling judged, especially if they're on the receiving end of that, and that fear of judgment might lead to them trying to seek validation from others that they're doing things right. I've gotten plenty of those comments myself, and to be honest with you, I find them hilarious. I find it hilarious that people actually think that I care what they think. I find it hilarious that somebody who I've never met and who I never will meet thinks that they have some sort of input on how I should live my life. I find it hilarious. I find the whole thing, some of the comments are honestly really, really funny. I've had people tell me that I shouldn't have a dog as a minimalist. All right, Levi, here's the deal. I know it's been like a good 10 years. I know we love each other very much, but um, some schmuck on the internet says that I can't be a minimalist if I have you. So I'm gonna need you to leave, okay? Here, I'm gonna open the door and I need you to run away. Okay, time for you to get out. I've had people tell me that I shouldn't have a house as a minimalist, that if I'm not living in a studio or a one bedroom apartment, then I'm not a minimalist. If that's your opinion, that's fine. I just don't care what you think. I've had people tell me that I'm doing something wrong by defrosting my bread in my oven and that I should have a toaster oven instead because it's a waste of energy, but those same people would tell me that I wasn't a minimalist if I had an extra appliance sitting on my kitchen counter. Side note, my oven's actually a dual oven, which means I'm only ever using half of it, which is only slightly bigger than a toaster oven anyways, but none of that's the point because it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what a stranger thinks. But the internet has given everybody with an opinion a platform and everybody has an opinion, but most of them are worthless. And on the flip side of this, the seventh way that I think people are doing minimalism wrong is by judging others for not being minimalists. Why do you care how somebody else lives their life? The way that you live your life is how you live your life and the way I live mine is how I live mine. If you visit friends or family and you find that their homes have more things than you feel are necessary or you don't feel like they're living in accordance to your principles, well, good, they shouldn't be. As long as they're not hurting anybody else, what they own, how many pairs of shoes they have, how many cars are on their driveway, how big their house is, how much clutter is on their kitchen counters is none of your business. Being a minimalist does not make you a better person than anybody else. It does not make you smarter. It does not make you more fulfilled. It does not make you more enlightened. It's just a framework for how you choose to live your life. And judging someone else for not being a minimalist or maybe even for being a minimalist, but not in the same way that you do it, says a lot more about you than it does about them. When I visit someone's house, I feel like it's well within my right to be concerned about cleanliness. Like I don't wanna walk into somewhere where there's cockroaches or bed bugs. I don't wanna walk into somewhere where animals use the floor as a bathroom and then the floor is not cleaned up and I have to walk through that in my socks, that's horrible. 
but somebody having a stack of mail on their kitchen counter or maybe having more furniture in a room than I think looks good, that's none of my business. Why would I care? Why should I care? My efforts and my energy are finite. Why would I waste it on something that doesn't affect me at all? And finally, the eighth sign that you might be approaching minimalism incorrectly is that you're looking at it like a competition or like a goal line that you have to reach. Minimalism is not a competition. It's not a game that you win by having fewer possessions than everybody else. It's not a game that you win by having more bare surfaces in your house than everybody else. There is no end result of minimalism that you are racing towards. There's nothing there. There is no pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You will likely never feel like you've completed the minimalism task. There is no task to complete. There is no trophy to win. And even if you somehow got to some point where you felt like your life was completely harmonious and everything in your life was totally perfect, I mean, good for you, I guess but the chances that it's gonna stay exactly like that forever are pretty much zero. Like personally right now, I feel like I have all of the things that I need on a day-to-day -day basis and there's very few things that I feel like I'm lacking, but that can change at any point. I can find a new hobby, I can find a new interest, I can just find myself in need of something that I wasn't in need of yesterday or last week. If I one day get married or have a partner move in with me, he's gonna bring things with him too. And what am I supposed to say? Oh, you can't bring any possessions with you because I've reached perfect minimalism and I don't want you to screw it up. That's ridiculous, right? Part of life is personal growth and change and it's healthy and it's normal. And so stop stressing so much about the small arbitrary things that don't matter because you know what? They don't matter. These eight minimal mistakes are so common. There's a very good chance that if you're watching this video right now that you've made some of them. I know at certain points I definitely have, but what I want you to take away from this video, if nothing else, is that you should be living your life for you, not for the opinions of others, especially not people that you don't even know. But in general, you should be doing the things that make the most sense for you, that make you happy, that add value to your life. And if the way that you're living your life on a day-to-day -day basis is currently doing the opposite, if it's causing you stress, if it's making things more difficult, it might be time to reassess why you do the things that you do. If you enjoyed this video at all, please go ahead and hit that like button. Feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so yet. I make videos about minimalism, personal finance, simple living, frugal living, investing, side hustles, all that cool stuff. Feel free to follow me on Instagram as well at according underscore two underscore Nicole. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching as always. Take care and I'll see you next week.